All right, so today I'm going to talk about uh, reverse engineering. I'm going to use an executable that I made. Um, here's the uh, source code. It's written in C. And uh, basically the program has one function. It has an integer of the input, which is going to be the key. Uh, prints a little message, scans the input. And if the input um, equals 55, then it returns um, 0 and prints win. Otherwise, it prints you lose and returns a 1. So our goal today is going to try to um, take the binary without any debugging symbols. Um, I'm compiling it right now and uh, try to find the key without seeing the source code. So um, the first step that I want to do with this is um, run file on the uh, binary because if we don't know what the binary is, it helps to look at the file. Um, it's telling us that it's an uh, ELF 32-bit executable. Um, the 32-bit will help when we look at the assembly code. Um, it's dynamically linked, um, and it's for GNU Linux. And this will help us uh, if it was um, an unknown malware, perhaps, that we uh, don't feel like running if we don't know what it does right now. Um, however, right now I'm going to try running it with a uh, several different um, options to try to uh, like get some type of overflow, maybe um, get some type of error. So um, I'm going to try uh, entering the key first, see what happens, and like I expected, it pr um, prints lose. So now what I'm going to try to do is promote an overflow type um, thing using a Perl inject uh, injection. Um, basically, I'm going to use Perl to um, print. 2,000 um, copies of the character A, and I'm going to see if this tries to overflow it um, using the uh, as an argument. Um, it doesn't, and so next I'm going to try actually uh, overflowing the uh, internal variable of the uh, integer variable that uh, it asks us for. So I'm going to uh, type in a bunch of A's and um, see what happens. Basically, a lot of guess and check. Um, try messing it up, and again, it doesn't work. Uh, another type is to try putting in an unexpected data type like uh, negative numbers, in this case a large negative number. So um, we failed in trying to get an overflow, but um, getting an overflow can help if you're trying to uh, dissect how a program works, gives you a good idea of what's going on inside. Um, so next what I'm going to try to do is uh, look at the strings that's in the binary. And um, first what we see are a bunch of libraries, linux.so.2. Um, we also see libc.so.6, and these are the libraries. We also see, um, yeah, the uh, scanf function, which is included in there, which we can know takes in the key. We also see the printf function. We see um, glibc, um, two versions, and then we also see the text that is printed. Um, this is useful for getting an idea of uh, what type of text is embedded in this executable. Now we're going to try ltrace, which tracks is the libraries that um, library calls. So we look at this, um, we see the printf, and now we type in the uh, um, input, and we can see the libraries that are called as it scans the key and prints the lose and returns sign. Now we're going to try strace, which looks for system calls. I'm um, going to scroll up here, and basically the output we're going to look at to see what it's doing. We see access, mmap, another access open, mmap, um, close. mmap is used for memory mapping. Um, it's useful to look at that, see what's going on. Um, if there's any obvious errors with uh, memory mapping, can be used um, against the program. Memory protect, um, got to look at that too. And we also see uh, memory unmap, which unmaps the uh, memory that has been previously mapped and uh, used by other programs. Um, we're also going to see um, the write and write enter key. And it's going to read the keys that we enter. And then it's going to, again, use the exit function with an exit status of 1. So uh, now we've got a pretty good idea of how this program actually works. And um, we're actually going to have to try using a debugger. I'm going to use the GNU debugger, or GDB. Um, it gets pretty intense, uh, but it's the most in-depth um, analysis you're going to get of a binary. So uh, it helps to learn how to uh, use a debugger like this. So first I'm going to switch um, the uh, disassembly uh, language um, over from uh, the default of AT&T to Intel. It's really a preference thing. Now I'm going to do, uh, disassemble the main function. Uh, just resize the screen so you can see a little bit more. And I'm going to look at the uh, different instructions. You see the memory location, the offset from zero, um, the original base memory, the uh, instruction, the operands. And this is all in assembly. Um, we're going to look at different calls that it's making. You can see a uh, call to uh, scan, uh, compare function, which are very useful. Look at a uh, jump not equal, um, another call, and it jumps down there. 
if it's not equal, a call to printf, and basically um, now you can get an idea of how the function flows. So uh, I'm going to take a closer look at the printf function. We already know what it does, but um, if it was an unknown binary and it was a, a customized function, you might want to take a look at that. Same thing with the scanf function, see where it jumps to. Um, hopefully you can get an idea of what's going on. I'm going to go back to main, and the important thing we see is a compare function. In this case, we're comparing the EAX register to um, OX37. Now, if you th um, use a uh, converter, um, OX37 is actually binary for 55. Um, let's try running with 55, and there's our key. Um, basically, um, if we're doing with a password type thing, compare um, instructions are very useful. It's often, um, if it's in plain text like that, it'll be there. Uh, another way to look at it is um, we're using an object dump with the disassembly option, and this will just dump out all the assembly that could make it up. See the different sections, um, init section, um, the libc section. Um, it's basically um, a good way to look at different, um, different forms of the assembly, try to get another good idea of what's going on. Uh, I can see a no-op slide here, which um, basically does nothing. Um, and if you look down here, you might actually see, uh, yes, the same uh, compare instruction that we saw in a uh, GNOME uh, GNU debugger. Um, and there you have it. So just as a little overview of what we did, um, we took an executable that we did not know how it worked. We did not have the source code. We were able to run a few different programs on it, like uh, file, strings, ltrace, strace, and finally we used the uh, GNU debugger to take a look at the assembly code behind it. Uh, from there, we were able to find the secret key that allowed us to um, get a return value of zero for the program. Um, so that's all we have for today. Thanks for watching.